Well, I really liked that kitchen. That was a lot of fun to shoot. And I think it turned out really, really good. You know, the smaller the room, the easier it is to work with and to light. Um, but more than that, I think we got some really dynamic angles and some really dynamic images. And I, I really hope we brought that room to life. My own personal feeling, I think the kitchen is the center of the home and the kitchen is what will sell that home. So I did spend a little bit of extra time in there to show that all off. And I could tell as I was shooting uh, that it was all gonna pay off, that that, that that room was going to be the best looking room in the house. So that was worth the extra effort to try and make that uh, room work. Now we're moving on to the dining room, which is, I think, a very special room in this house. I really like the view, and uh, it's a really unique uh, room. I haven't seen a room like that in a long, long time with those giant windows that wrap all the way around. Um, so that was kind of fun and exciting and challenging. You know, pulling in those windows is not going to be super, super easy. Um, I know a lot of people in the real estate photographer community stress over the window pulls. And, um, you know, this room, they're just going to be very, very easy. Um, I think one of the reasons um, a lot of people stress is they overpull the windows and it has to look really good when you do that overpull. You know, I don't think it should look like a photograph or a set with a photograph outside the window. Uh, for real estate photography. That's not the way rooms and, and um, windows work. Um, over my shoulder, I think you can see a window right there. This is lit. You know, I'm not denying. I'm, I'm a little vain. I will light myself so that I look good. Um, but if, if the window were lit at the same level as me, this would look a little strange. The fact that it's glowing and that, um, you know, I'm nicely lit and that's overexposed, that's natural. That's what your eye expects. So I would say going into something where a window pull is super important, it still needs to be overexposed, even if only a little bit. If, if you're selling a view property, that view has to show, but it doesn't have to be a perfect pull either. It can be half a stop, three quarters of a stop, even a full stop over, and you'll still catch the view. Plus, you'll see the view in the exteriors of the home. Getting every home, every every room in the house, getting, uh, 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 not sure quite the word, but you know, you don't have to have perfect pulls. That's, I guess, ultimately where I'm going. They need to um, they need to be overexposed a little, and you need to lose a little bit of definition. Otherwise, it, uh, it just looks flat and fake. I would go on to say that um, the, the garage, the next room that we shoot, is um, an interesting little lesson in that, again, you need to think about what you're showing and the composition. Um, not a hard room to shoot, but um, a good lesson to learn there. Then we go into the master bedroom and the master is kind of interesting in that um, it looks like shit. I mean, what else can I say? Unmade, ugly bed and that's it. Um, I knew going into that 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 was going to be a virtual stage. So I shot it a little differently than I might have had it been furnished. Um, and so I shot it really wide and I tried to make room so that the virtual stager would have room to place their various staging accoutrement um, and, and make it all work. So kind of a, a few different things to see um, and do here. I, I think I go off on a couple of tangents, um, which is always really fun, um, at least for me. I don't know about you. But anyway, hope there's a lot that you get out of this episode. Hey, I wasn't sure if I was going to do this final room or not, but I am because I'm going to do it a fairly tricky involved shot and I wanted to show how to do that. Um, but first, what's the first thing we do? We do a walk around, we look at the room, and we figure out how we can improve it. So let's take a look. All right, this is just a dining room, so...
Wow, that's old. What is that? Kids. <laughs> okay. There's the porch. All right, so I, I think there's a couple of obvious things. Gotta go, gotta go. Um, some less obvious things. What about that rug? It really, we're not selling rugs. It's nothing we really need. Um, and it's kind of stained. I'm gonna yank it. Um, here's something to consider. We've got storage here. Do we want to show the storage? Do we want to do that? We want people to see that. Do we want to shoot this? Or do we want to shoot one with that open so that people can see what it looks like? Think about that. Um, so hopefully, like when you come into a room like this, you think about all the things you need to change. And hopefully you also think about things that you just go, oh wow, about, because that's how you make your sh your shot selection. When you come in here and you look out those windows and you go, oh wow, that's really pretty. That's what you need to show. If you see something and you kind of turn your nose up at it, that's what's gotta go. Show and go. We gotta figure that all out. So um, yeah, when you do, oh, <laughs> I didn't see that at first. Uh, yeah, that's going to be staying there unless they repaint and then they'll have to have me come back out and reshoot. But I think it's staying there. Um, so anyway, yeah, don't just look at the things that have to go. Stop and admire the things that take your breath away. You know, that, that make you stop in your tracks and go, ooh, that's cool. Because that's the thing that you should be shooting. There's there's two things I think about. Um, things that take your breath away like that, that just, um, you, you need to stop and look at and just go, oh, that's really cool. That needs to be a shot. The other thing I like to notice is something I didn't really see in, oh, oh I gotta show you this. This is super cool. It's right out there in the tree. There he is. Wow, that's cool. Anyway, that's what I'm talking about though. You, you need to stop and notice things like that. Things that are really cool. That doesn't really add anything to the house here. But I was shooting another house the other day and there was a golf course behind it. Obviously you wanna show the golf course, but there was somebody in the tee box. And so I hurried and got a shot with them in the tee box because that made it more active and more, to me, appealing and, and it, it reinforced the story. So here, we're, we're looking at that view and we know we're gonna be shooting that way and we're not gonna be shooting that way. I mean, that's obvious. But the things you see in this house that you didn't see in the last house are also things that I think you really need to focus on and make sure you get pictures of. Why is that? Why do you wanna focus on things that you didn't see in the last house? Because that's what's gonna make this house unique and different. When people are scrolling through the MLS and there's a kitchen, there's a living room, there's a dining, whoa, look at that, there's a squirrel. You know, they're, they're more likely, in my opinion, I'm not a realtor, but you know, hey honey, that place with the squirrel, remember that one? You know, it, when there are memorable features, something that is unique to that house and unique to that listing, people are gonna remember that. It's gonna be something more than all the other listings that they've seen. And when you start offering um, realtors shots that they haven't seen or are different than every other listing on the MLS, you're going to get more work because you are proving your uniqueness. And so show the uniqueness of the house and you show your uniqueness. All right, let's get to this cleaning up this room. Okay, so I'm taking stuff out into the garage. And this made me think about something. We're gonna need a garage shot. Might as well shoot it now. So what would you shoot? I think we only need one. 
Shoot that. I think you kind of know where I'm thinking. Shoot that. Or shoot that. What, what would be the one shot that would tell the story of this garage? Obviously, I picked this. My reasoning is that this shows more, uh, again, of the uniqueness of this garage. I mean, it's not that cool to have that and that, but it does have it. Many garages don't. It's not that messy. It's a little messy, but you know what? This is showable. It's a garage. People expect junk. Shows the refrigerator. And most importantly, it shows the floor, which is not perfect, but it is not just concrete either. So I would say when you're, when you're picking your shots, make sure you look at what the content is and what it's showing and what it's adding to the story you're already telling. Um, you know, I think if I were to, to shoot this, the fuck does that say? Nothing. I mean, that, that could be any garage anywhere and it doesn't, it doesn't say anything about this. So, you know, definitely think about your shots, think about what's in them, think about what it's saying about the house and what it's adding to the story you're already telling. If it's not adding anything, you shouldn't be shooting it. There's no reason, period, at all, to show that shot, none, none whatsoever. Um, there could be an argument made for this corner because that shows the entrance and this shot doesn't. And it also, well, I think that one shows the stairway too. Um, this shot, it's not as bad as the shot from there, but it's pretty bad. So yeah, I would, I would go with either one of these two angles, but I think they're also close enough that you only need one of them. So I'm going with that one. And um, that's where my story ends on the garage. Thought I was done in the garage, but I guess I'm not. What does this tell you? Tells you my battery is about to die. I'm way at the other end of the house. My camera bag's way inside the house, way at the other side. And um, I'm busy here working on something and that's about to die or more likely it dies while I'm shooting. Do I wanna just break my concentration and have to chase down a battery? No, let me show you something else. I promise you I did not set this up. Spare battery in the pocket. Always, 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 always. Then as soon as this dies, all you have to do, pop that bad boy out. Notice it goes into this pocket. Pop a new battery in there. And now we're, we're back to shooting. That is the way every shooter should. That comes from my background, in, and I was a TV news photographer for 15 years, and um, you know what? I ran out of battery is not an excuse. Yeah, always be prepared, always have. There's an expression a lot of us use. Two is one and one is none. If you don't have two of everything, like my B light, then you don't have any. Um, I do have spares for it, I'm just, not desperate enough to go pull one out at this point. All right, here we are. This is, oh, I've got to take that out still too. But that's, that's our room. All right, what are we going to do? Well, I think we need a stage shot, setting shot here. And then we'll take our second shot here and look in and show the kitchen connection. All right, I have that set up for my initial shot. I am tilt shifted a little down and a little to the right. Um, and I think that gets me everything I want. So let's think about lighting this. How are we gonna light that? Um, I think what we're going to do is 
probably just gonna open this, put a light there, put a light there, and that'll be our first shot. Our second shot, we'll put a light there, put a light there, and get the light coming this way. So let's see how that works. All right, got what we want. Let's come over here and make sure that's turned off. Set ourselves on three brackets. Oh, um, yeah, I have to, I do have to reset this every time I um, take the battery out. Where is, yeah, there. All right, let's go ahead and shoot it again. Okay, none of those are good enough for a window pull. I generally, as you know, I don't mind windows that look a whole lot like that, a little blown out, but I think this is pretty enough that I want a really good window pull. So I'm actually gonna bring it down to there and do another bracket there. So I've got lots of options for that window pull. Um, take it out of bracket mode and I'm gonna bring it way down Turn on the flash and let's see what we get here. It's a small enough room, we should be able to light this really easily. Okay, see that glare? We will have to do a window pull. I think both um, lights need to come down a little bit. Let's go to eights. Let's try that. Yeah, we're gonna get glare. Oh, okay, that's much better. It's a little yellow because of, um, you know, I didn't set the white balance for a flash, but I don't care. All right, let's move you. I think, I think I'm gonna go right there and then I'm gonna put the other one right over there. Come on, Mr. D. Yeah, we'll go up here. I think that looks good. And they actually need to be a little stronger for here. So let's go back up to two. And let's pop that bad boy. Let's do one at four just for the heck of it. You know, we're here, so we might as well cover our butts. It's easier to do it here than to not have it. Yeah, that works really good for me. All right, that's done. Let's reverse and go over there. How's that for a cool shot? Didn't know what you were looking at at first, did you? What you are looking at is I put the phone right down on the table and you were looking straight up at one of the lights Again, everything is a lesson. Everything is something to learn from. And every time you see a new angle, even an accidental one like that, look at that as a possible shot, something that you could use, something a little different to show off a house. All right, there we are, all set up. That's the shot I want. We are all nice and level on our little archy Swissies. And um, got a light there. Got a light there. Come on. There. Nope. Focus there. There we go. I got a light there. And I got a light there. Probably, you know what? Let's, let's do a tilty shifty. I don't think we need that much. Oops. This button. That's, sorry. I, I just, I'm learning how to shoot. How to be on a, come on. There we go. Okay. I don't think we need that much there, do you? Um, let's rotate little Mr. Tilty Shifty a little bit more that way. And we're gonna have it go down, oops, down and left this time. I'm sorry, this is awfully hard to do with one hand. I'm going to put you down and bring you back up. All right, you can see the angle it's at now. So it's tilting at that angle. And this is the shot that I've got. I think just a little bit there of the path to the kitchen 
and more of the this. I like showing a little bit of roof here because those are kind of, you know, they're not the dining room lights I would choose, but they are interesting. So I'm going to leave them in the shot and it does vary the shots a little bit. So I think I'm going to shoot this. Um, I think my side is good there. I think my side is good there. Maybe down, my in third. Yep. Okay. There we go. All right, I'm going to do the same thing for a window pole. I'm going to get a nice clean. There we go. Let's do three more there. All right. Oh, that'll be really fun. All right, so let's do our flip. Oh, bad, bad, bad. Look at that 320th of a second. Let's shoot it. Just so you can see what happens, um, it will not work. Oh, I only need one. Let's go back to one. Let's go back to our shot, and you can see why it didn't work. There, see that black band at the bottom? That's because the camera is shooting faster than the flash you're operating at. So we exceeded the flash sync speed. So if you ever get a black band at the bottom, that's what it is. You need to go back down to two hundredths of a second. If that's still too overexposed, at that point, start bringing your ISO down. Um, I'm, I'm okay with that right there. So let's do one flash right there. And how does that turn out? Pretty good. Our only problem, obviously, is that. And I knew that was gonna happen. If I had beat bad boy, I would be flashing that. But as you know, that broke in the middle of this shoot. So I'm just gonna pop that there. That'll light this up. And then we'll be done with this room. And then we'll edit it. <laughs> Two shots, that shouldn't take too long. All right, here we go. There we go, look at that. That actually might not even need to be combined. That looks pretty dang good. Super happy, let's go edit.